Hey guys, I'm Cindy Falconing Zingulo and I'm going to teach you the extension workout for lower body. Now, if you have the pro system, which is what I'm going to be wearing with the shoulder straps, great. If you only have the FX Boom kit, that's more the basic system, where it's just the belt and a couple bands, that's fine too. You can still follow along in this workout. So, anyways, I'm putting my blocks on, I have my belt tightened and I'm getting ready to put my shoulder straps on. So we're gonna be doing an EDT workout. We're gonna be doing 10 minute segments where we go back and forth between opposing muscle groups. Um, in this case, like quads versus hamstrings. So what's gonna happen is when you're doing a, a set of eight or fewer on your quads, and then you're gonna do a set of eight or fewer on your hamstrings. And technically, we're gonna do a 10 minute cycle where when one's resting, the other one's working, when the other one's working, the other one's resting. Versus if you were to just work all one body part, all quads, then you would have to actually take a rest in order for the body to recoup. So the rest period is combated with the opposite muscle group. Now keep in mind that if you don't have a front and back like a quad hamstring, I might do a right leg versus left leg series. So we're going to do 10 minute bouts. Um, now, one thing with stretching, if you have a myo body, a Theragun, or a Hyperbol or hyperice, uh, any of those can help release your muscles. A common tight point on extension people is the Achilles. So definitely the lower leg is something you can do with a roller, you can do with a stick. So right there tends to get really tight. Um, another big one on extension people is your foot. Because you guys have, hey pup, I got a dog. Um, because you guys tend to have weaker glutes due to tight hip flexors that become kind of like causing the inhibition, with the feet and the ankles work almost overtime. So releasing your foot by simply massaging and manipulating works very, very, very well. And plus this gets blood flow. A lot of times when, when people point, they go up on their toes and roll outside. So this inside calf might be really tight. These are all things, so you're gonna release some muscles and then you're gonna activate the ones that are weaker and then you'll be on your way. So calf is a really big one. Achilles is another one, the foot. I'm gonna just show you the one foot for time's sake, but doing all through the calf. Now, if you want one of these, I have these on discount. Um, contact me, uh, they're awesome, my buddy. It's not quite as aggressive um, as far as painful wise as a hyperice or Theragun or hyperbole type things. Um, or Tim Tam, uh, but it also can do uh, like CBD oils and lotions. And it can restore range of motion pretty quick. Now stretching works too. Um, this seems to be a good addition to stretching. Now another really common type point is hamstrings. So the back of your leg right here. Now I'm using the edge of this. Now I can use the flat side if it's too much. I have various speeds. The units I have are the probe units, by the way. And you do the hamstring head. Now, if your knees, when you squat, cave in, you're gonna need to do the IT bands. If you have piriformis issues, you can do right there on the side of your butt. Like when you do the figure four stretch. But most people, honestly, it's your IT bands, your TFL bands, the hamstrings. Now, the internal rotators right here. and you do this on both legs. Now, if you can't grab your foot, you can wrap a, a belt around it or you can put it up on a wall. And then also the inside, because if these muscles are tight when you go to work out, you tend not to be able to get as good of a workout. IT bands, again, piriformis, You guys got the general idea. I'm gonna put my shit back on. Now there is one more that is kind of key. Uh, a lot of times extension people have really tight upper necks. That's how you can tell they tend to be shrugged up. They get a lot of migraines and headaches. So one of the key ones that does play a role in the function of your lat is the neck muscle. Plus if you're holding weight, you need this to be a little bit more relaxed and also your pec muscle right here on the chest. 
the one time my dog wants to play fetch, right? So all right through here, and also through the bicep head, but definitely, definitely up here, upper neck. Now, I would definitely talk to your doctor or anyone before starting any new programs. If you have any injuries, please be aware of the impact of your injury on working out or working out on your injury. So extension people, all the upper chest, the bicep, the upper back, this thing is awesome. All right, oh, one more, hip flexor. If you stand right here, you tuck your pelvis, all right there on the front of that hip it is really good. If your back tends to grab, this will completely release your lower back. All right, so, and again, the looser your hip flexor is, the more your glutes work. The more your glutes work, the better your workout is. The more relief you get on your feet, the better your posture will be, you get less headaches. There's a whole slew of things, so just focus on definitely loosening up. All right, great tool. Okay, so I'm still gonna take you through a couple stretches. But first, I'm going to put the system on. I have the shoulder straps, so I clip them to the front. So the key is nothing is touching my, nothing is touching my abs. Everything is touching my lower back. If you need an extra towel or something to push back here so it doesn't uh, have any gapping around the spine area, that's fine. And I'm going to take my little bit longer strap and so when you're by yourself, only blue or in your, some people's case, red goes behind your head and you put it through. And if you're by yourself, that might be as far as you can get, unless if you have some flexibility. If you do, which thank gosh I do. See, that's why you want to keep your shoulders in shape so you can do stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna attach it. And that is so as I'm lifting, that thing doesn't come up and hit my neck. All right, now I'm gonna show you various drills with ball, bosu, um, disc. If you don't have a ball or bosu, you can use an ottoman, you can use a chair. Um, I use the TRX, if you don't have a TRX, you can kind of modify with the jump rope. Um, I'm gonna do circle bands and sheet bands. Sheet bands don't break. If they do, they don't snap you in the eye, but obviously use what you've got. All right, so for stretches, a lot of time people have an issue getting down to the floor. Um, so what I am a big fan of is incorporating a chair into some of the stretches. So see how I'm connected? So I'm pushing into a lunge stretch just like this. I'm wiggling my hips around. Now my belly button, I'm bringing my belly button to my sternum. Should feel pretty good. And then I can do a hamstring stretch. Ah, there we go. So I can wiggle my foot side to side. I can point and flex. But notice my chest is lifted. I'm not just rounding my back. So, let me try the other side. Hip flexor stretch. Pushing through that back heel, squeeze the butt. Hamstring stretch. Bobble my foot, gas pedal. Now, if I'm not hooked up, it's still gonna be a good stretch. I might wanna push my foot rather than pulling it towards me as an extension. The pressure on my back is what makes the biggest difference. And that is a really good stretch. Another one is pushing outward like this, pushing those knees out. This is gonna get this internal rotator. 
Now, if, the butt of, if your butt muscles are really tight, there's your pigeon stretch. Now, like I said, if you have something you can hook into, great. If you don't, don't stress it. But my prediction is this one, the frog stretch. This is a standing version. The one where you're down is going to be more like this. Okay, but those are both frog stretches. I'm gonna show you another little trick on frog stretch. But real quick first, calf stretch, turn. Push your foot into your heel, rock your foot in and out. You should feel an inside calf stretch. And raise up and down your toes, bend your knee, try the other foot. Turn my toe inward, because a lot of times when people stretch their calves, they toe out and they walk. So stretching it like that is not where it is an issue. Stretching it like that is like, whoa, okay. And you'll know once you do it. So put your toe facing inward, rock your ankle back and forth, pushing your heel down. Do a little couple knee bends. Now, if you're really super, super tight, you can always do one. where your feet are on a wall. Laying on your back. Now I have two bands, you could get that other band and just lay back like this. And the closer your butt is to the wall, the better the stretch. And the thing about this band is a lot of times you're going to be trying to train in and I'm trying to train you out, but I wanna stretch this. So the band forces you to train out, which gives you a greater ability to stretch this. And so, and pull your toes back, wobble your foot side to side. This will get that internal rotator stretch. Great, great, great stretch. Now the frog one where you're down on your knees like this is also good, but my suggestion would be push into a wall, versus pushing down on the ground. That's something about the flexion extension. So, one of the key exercises that I'm gonna do with you guys, we're gonna do a hip circle. Now, I'm gonna have you do it with the three minutes on the video. I'm gonna show you it right here. So minute one is gonna be this, out to the side. Second minute is straight back. Third minute, is knee in to straight back, and I'm pushing a door. If I can attach a band into here and pull while pushing a door, even better. So we got three minutes on each side. So that is one of your drills that you'll be doing. Now you can do a double bands like this, or you can do one of the bands with handles and tie it. Like I said, it really does make a big difference when it's around your knees and you can go wide. It really prevents you from guarding. So another drill we're gonna be doing is a butt bridge. So a butt bridge, a band is around your knees, like so. Now I can shut my door handle into the door, like so. Now I can do this for my head and shoulders on a ball. I can also do this when I'm hooked up. So this is the butt bridge. So I can hook it up to a door and it comes down to the shoulder. just like this, but that pull on the lower back where I have to fight it makes a world of difference. And then I can add a weight. You guys are gonna be doing 30 butt bridges like so. And after you do 30 butt bridges, I'm gonna have you open and close, keeping your feet firmly gripped into the ground, weighing your heels, and you're gonna do 30 open and closes, and then you'll go back. Now the key on a butt bridge, make sure your belly button tucks and goes to your sternum. I don't want to see the arch your back. Belly button goes to your sternum, down, up and tuck, down, up and tuck. And I'm pushing my back 
into this band. So now say you have the basic system and you don't have the shoulder straps. This is what I coached in the manual. You put the band under your lower back, you push your back into the band as you bridge. Another little trick is imagine pushing the ground that way, not physically moving it, but imagine trying to push the ground away from you to get your quads more active. But this band pressure on your back is what makes all the difference. So you're gonna do 30 bridges, 30 open and closes, three sets. So we're gonna be putting a band into the door across, like so. Now make sure you lock the door and make sure it's always secure. I would hate for anyone to have any issues of falling or anything like that. And then I'm gonna attach it to here. Now, if you do not have a shoulder strap, another option is, is you can just hold it by your neck as you do these same drills, okay? So we're gonna go 10, or we're gonna do a minute on each drill. The first one, you're gonna stand on one foot, you're gonna lean back, you're gonna lean forward. Now, you can reach with one or both arms. The goal is to keep the weight in this heel and to have your foot kind of grab and never touch your foot down. The second one is to reach sideways and back to a balance. If you can come cross, even better. Sideways, come up and cross. Now notice when I go sideways, my toe is not turning up. That is a common habit, that's a bad habit. I want your toe turning down and your glutes on and come back to a balance if you want to cross, great. So that's the second one. The third one is focusing forward. My hips are here. I have a very slight bend in my knees. I open and close my hips while holding onto the ground. Now, common error, people start doing this. Do you see the difference between that and the actual hip open? So let me demonstrate with the other leg, just so you're clear. So one minute of forward back swings, and you're trying to get off center, you're trying to get off balance. The second one is going sideways, over and crossed. Make sure that toe stays facing down and you should feel your glutes. The band pulling you forward, incorporate your core more so you don't use your lower back. Now your feet should burn a little bit, but not the main, the main gig. If your feet are burning more than anything, then you're missing the hips. And then opening the hip is the last one. So that is six different ones, three on each side that you're gonna be doing. So, that's so one of the first drills that we're gonna be doing is gonna be five minutes of quads and hamstrings. Now, since I don't wanna work your hamstrings too much, I'm gonna put more of the emphasis on the quads. So this is going to be a mountain climber. So if I want to make this mountain climber a little bit more intense, I can hook myself down to something like a chair. And I will give you an example of that. But if you don't have the ability to do that, that is fine too. All right, so you see how this band, that band is around the chair. So. I can clip this to me, and we're gonna be doing one, two, three, four, five, six. Now notice my knees are not coming across, they're going straight. Give me about 10 on each side. Then I can clip. And then I can lay on my back, or I can go back to the front, front bridge on the bow suit because I want to focus more on just glutes and less hamstrings. This is what I think would be a better option than the alternative, which is hamstrings. But if you want to do this, by all means, keeping your butt up hamstring curls. Now I can do one leg at a time. It's going to be 10 on each. And then I pop back up and I clip back in and I go back to my mountain climber. 
Again, if I don't have this, I'm still gonna work just great. So mountain climbers in either butt ridge or hamstrings, double leg, single leg, um, 10 and 10, we're going five minutes. So that is one of the first exercises. Five minutes, get as many sets as you can. If you get to a point you can't do 10, do nine, do eight, don't drop your weight, so to speak. All right, part one. So the next one, this is gonna be squats. Now, I have two options. I can do a ball squat where I put a ball up against my back. Now, if I have this pull, even better, if you can't get this arrangement, do just the ball, and it's squatting down and up like so. All right, so that is part one. You're gonna do eight to 10 of those. Now, if I wanna add weight, I would hold weight up by my neck, and I would do a deep squat like this. Now, if I don't have this, the weight up by my neck is a good idea. If I wanna put a circle band around my knees, that's another great idea, okay? So we're gonna do 10 of these, right? Then after that, if you wanna do 10, lunges where you go forward. If you can get all the way down and push back, great. So 10 on each leg or eight. Now, if you'd rather do it without weight, that's fine too. Now, again, my goal of this is not to lean forward. The more you lean forward, the more hamstrings. I'm trying to get away from that. If you're still having an issue with that, instead of lunging forward, you can lunge backwards. Here's a trick. When I lunge backwards, see my hip rotating in, I want you to focus rotating open. All right, so pretend you have a horse between your legs, and the key is to stay vertical. A lot of times you're gonna to wanna to lean forward. That's what this is for. I can actually hold this with my hands if I don't have the shoulder strap and do a very similar thing, and I need to make sure my weight stays in my heel, not my toes. So again, we're gonna go 10 lunges, if I want to hold weight, I hold it by my neck, and then we have ball squats. So, 10 ball squats or less if you do heavy. 10 or eight lunges on one leg, 10 or eight lunges on the other leg, 10 minutes, all right? Okay, guys, so the next one. This is gonna be a 10 minute cycle. We're gonna do a side lunge. And then we're gonna do a back lunge, and if you wanna add a cross behind, great. So, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and switch. And again, I can hold a dumbbell instead of this band. Whatever works for you is great. 10, now when I go to the side, notice, my toe is not turning out. My toes have to stay facing forward. My arms, I'm not letting my upper body rotate towards the standing leg because that's actually you kind of compensating. All right, so side, angle back, cross. This is where it gets funny for me. Side, angle back, cross. You don't need to do the cross behind if, it, if it's too bothersome on your knees. Eliminate it. Side, and back are the main ones. And then we'll go back to the original leg. Again, if you hold weight, I'm not holding weight down by my belly. I get the weight up by my neck. All right. So, how it would look. Weight in my heel, side, angle back. Cross, side, angle back, cross, side, angle back. Okay, you got the idea? One other option is a TRX. So when I'm doing TRX, I make sure that it's secured in the door and the door is locked. Now I can use the TRX for those last ones, which
which are the disc sliding ones. But I was going to give you a side lunge back. So this, again, I feel is a little bit better when I have the pull forward and I can do all the squats and all that. But the side lunge, push back, side lunge, push back. And if I were to, I can hold a weight in one hand, the hand that I'm lunging towards. So notice when I pick up the weight, I didn't bend it over. So side lunge, eight to 10 on one side. And then if I want, I can do a cross behind to a high knee. And you do eight to 10 of those. Then side lunge. Now notice when I go to my side lunge, I stop here. I could swing my arm down if I had to. I'm not so far that if I were to swing my arm down, I'm gonna hit my thigh. Okay, so you wanna be where your arm can swing. But the weight is best when it's up by your neck. Give me 10 or eight or less. And cross behind to a high knee. Now, if any of those hurt, just go ahead and eliminate it. Another one is the deep squat. If you want to add that one in on this one, you're in position, it's a great exercise. Maybe even do a deep squat to a hip extend because you have the ability to sit back just a little bit more. Okay, so side lunge to cross behind, 10 on each side or eight, then do the other side, add weight if you want. Not mandatory. And then do the other side. So we've done quads and hands. We've done side lunges, we've done cross behinds. If you do a step up, if you were to have a pile box, a box, I think it would be better. I'm gonna use the chair, but make sure whatever you're using is stable or you can even use the BOSU, which isn't a big step, but it's still a step. And again, I can hold this with my hands. 10, nine. And the goal is to lower yourself down slow. Step all the way up, notice I'm hitting to a hip extend and back down. Step up, hip extend, back down. If I wanna hold weight, it's by my neck. If I didn't have one of these to tie into, same thing on the other side. Make sure the weight is in your heel, your foot is not hanging off the chair. If you have a slippery surface, you may wanna make sure there's something that prevents anything and never go more than 90 at your knee. If I would start too low, then starting too high. So, eight to 10 on this one. All right. Super heavy band in the door. So in this case, I'm gonna double it up. If you don't have the ability to double up, do whatever you have the capability of doing, okay? Um, the higher in the door, the better. And if you have shoulder straps, great. If you do not have shoulder straps, go ahead and hold the bands to your neck. So the goal with the door is to push the door as hard as you can with your feet to get your glutes to turn on so your hip flexors turn off. So I'm putting this dead center. I'm gonna put this around my knees. And I'm pushing this as hard as I can with my feet. So, go ahead and give me a set of, now notice I curl up one vertebrae at a time and I lay down one vertebrae at a time. It's very common air, people arch. Now, this is the alternative. Hold on. See how I'm holding it by my neck? But if you're holding your feet, barely putting them on the door, you're gonna go to the hip flexor. If you're pushing the door as hard as you can with your feet, you're gonna go to your abs. And then the second part of that would be a side reach. Now, if that's not doable because you have shoulder straps, you can do one arm at a time and the other arm at a time. 
Another alternative I could do on this particular one is I could shut the handle, single handles at the very top of the door and drop it down and have two bands so it's quite a bit of resistance from straight up. That works great too. So the higher it is, the less torque on the neck, but it's a great exercise. The more pull you have, the more you feel your abs, keep your feet pushed into the door and really focus on going, I'd say more up quick so you don't have to worry about lifting your feet and really push the door as hard as you can and lower down one vertebrae at a time. So go 10 center, 10 on each side, and do that one for 10 minutes. All right, guys, now you're officially done. Um, call me if you have questions, you did awesome. And uh, I like lots of stories and feedback, all right? Take pictures, don't forget. Love you.